All right, everyone. Let's welcome Pim with Kubenix uh, or Kubenix. Kubenix is fine, I think. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, Let's welcome give him a hand. Oh. Yeah, thanks for the warm welcome. Uh, so my name is Pim. I'm going to be talking about a project called Kubenix. Uh, and to start right off, I am not the author of this project, but uh, I have only some minor contributions. Uh, but I use this in my own home lab quite a lot. And this project has not, never been uh, formally presented for an audience. So I thought, let's just uh, give this some uh, attention. Uh, maybe other people uh, will find this useful. And the project itself has been forked quite a lot and is now under the uh, stewardship of Brighton Hall. Um, yeah, so I'm going to uh, uh, talk a bit about my background and why I find this so interesting. Uh, I'm going to talk about Kubernetes, and I know a lot of people think this is a, a very uh, uh, buzzwordy thing, but I'm going to keep it short and hopefully you will understand how it uh, works. Uh, and I'm going to uh, present what Kubenix um, brings to the table here. So who am I? Uh, my name is Pim. Uh, um, I am uh, currently a consultant at Sue, which is a consultancy company in the Netherlands, uh, currently doing some Linux and Ansible stuff. Uh, I am relatively new to Nix. I think I got introduced to it a little over a year ago. And I am really uh, an avid self-hoster. Uh, these are just some of the things that uh, I currently host. I think I'm missing like half of it. Um, yeah, if you can... Uh, wh whoever can name the most uh, at the end of the presentation, they, you get a prize, really. So uh, try to already uh, see uh, <laughs> what you can see here. Um, I will I will give this one away. This is Jellyfin. I think I'm going to use this as, a, as more of a, a, an example throughout my presentation. So I have these uh, three super uh, tiny mini PCs um, that are just running all these things. And I want to I want to run these with uh, uh, well, with Nix of course, and Nix OS preferably. So the naive thing would be to do services dot jellyfin dot enable and all the other things and just do that from on every server. And I think this works fine for the for the most part, except when one of your servers just dies. In that case, you need to kind of scramble to get the data out of there. Maybe you need some special networking on this this uh, specific machine, you need to uh, uh, reapply the configuration to another machine, which is of course very easy in Nixfest, but it's still, you need to do something here. Um, so I thought this was not really ideal in my case, uh, or I like to over-engineer these things. Uh, um, so yeah, also when you do need to do some maintenance, half your services will be offline. And in the end, yeah, your services are really tied to a specific host. And this boils down, in my opinion, to like the, the classic pets versus cattle uh, problem. You, if you do this, you're really, um, yeah, you're really treating your servers as pets and not as cattle that can just be replaced and uh, be turned off or even added to your uh, server cluster uh, at will. Now, one of the things, uh, one of the technologies that can help uh, with this is Kubernetes. And I don't know why, but the slide is a bit off here. I hope you can still read it. Um, so the idea with Kubernetes is that you can abstract your infrastructure. Uh, and I'm going to show you a bit of a, an example uh, for my uh, free service in a bit. Uh, and it works with container orchestration. So every workload that you have, so every service, just like, for example, Jellyfin, will uh, be a container, or as it's called in Kubernetes land, a pod. Uh, it will be uh, orchestrated by Kubernetes. And this means that Kubernetes will do its best to place it on a host, uh, but it's not tied down to just uh, one host. Um, under the hood, it uses a distributed state uh, maintained by SCD. And the idea here is that you have some actual state of your uh, cluster. Uh, you have uh, uh, a desired state, and Kubernetes will do its best to make sure that the actual state will uh, converge to your desired state in the end. So I had some fun with uh, with GIMP here, I think. Uh, 
this is so if I have this logical cluster over my three uh, uh, my, my three physical servers, I um, let Kubernetes manage these uh, containers, these pods for me, and maybe Kubernetes decides, oh, let's put Jellyfin on this server, Nextcloud on that one, Image on that one, and when one of the servers now dies, Kubernetes is smart enough to just well, just put it on another one because we see this, this node is offline. So for the availability of your uh, uh, infrastructure, uh, this, is, this is a really nice property. Um, so let's talk about uh, how we can actually mutate this, mutate this state in Kubernetes. Um, and the way that you do this is by having uh, uh, this YAML manifest that you submit to something called an API server. And API server is part of the of Kubernetes. You you submit this to the API server, and it will do its best to uh, yeah create this uh, this thing in truth. So what we say here is we have a, a pod, so a container uh, with a specific version. We give it a name, and under the spec is basically your configuration for this uh, for this container. We say we want a jellyfin, uh, uh, a jellyfin uh, container image, and we expose a port on this uh, container. Um, yeah, so writing this looks very easy and very short, but it can become quite cumbersome if you have uh, a big deployment of, of, of resources in your cluster. So what people have, yeah, have turned to uh, is something called Helm. Yes, <laughs> this is the whole idea. Uh, the problem with Helm, well, let's start with what, what it does. So it's a, it's a package manager for Kubernetes. Um, and basically everything that runs on Kubernetes is packaged as a Helm chart, as they call it. It's kind of like a package. Uh, and a Helm chart just uh, deploys a lot of these resources on your cluster uh, with some configuration that you can give it. Um, now, the configuration of this is actually being uh, a, a YAML file that is being templated. So you're templating a, uh, a structured language, um, which looks something like this. It's really unreadable, in my opinion. You even have to juggle around like indentation, which is it's really, it's really not what I think we want. Yeah. So now I want to introduce Kubenix. Uh, and the idea with Kubenix is that we can generate these manifests, these YAML manifests, using Nixos modules. Uh, and it has some very nice benefits. We don't have to uh, write those ugly YAML templates. We have a, uh, a functional language, Nix, in which we can uh, write these, these, uh, uh, these resources, these manifests. We have type checking and structure checking, or uh, checking if some options actually exist. And, well, Helm also has this modularity, but it's, I think it's really nice to write this in, uh, in the modularity that Nixos modules uh, uh, provide. Uh, so let's go into how this actually works and start off. Yeah, we start off with the open API specification uh, of Kubernetes. An open API uh, specification is a standard for describing uh, APIs, and this can either be done uh, in YAML or JSON. Um, and in, in the case of uh, Kubernetes, it specifies how to interact with Kubernetes, how to submit uh, and what the format is of what we submit to uh, the API server. Uh, I hope this is readable. Uh, so this is uh, an example of how it looks like for a pod. Uh, yeah. So for example, yeah, you can see it specifies some fields. It specifies the, the, the type of them. In this case, these are just strings that you can uh, submit. Uh, and we have also seen this, the spec, which is kind of the configuration, and this refers to another type, and uh, yeah, that can, I think, go on for quite a while, that just references other types and other types. But in the end, you get a, a, yeah, a, a description and uh, how your API is going to look like and what, how people can use it. So from this, we want to create a NixOS module. And yeah, so we need to generate Nix code, this is kind of, I think, the ugly part of, uh, of this project. Um, but 
it's not just as simple as uh, converting some JSON to, to Nix code, which is quite easy, but we have to kind of uh, uh, have unevaluated Nix code, Nix modules or functions, uh, uh, which we want to generate. So we can just print that. So yeah, this is how it looks like uh, to do that. It's still a template. It's kind of still as bad as Helm, but this has already been done. So if you uh, want to uh, use this, you don't have to write this. This has already been done for you and uh, we don't need a mess for that. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, all the way on, on the button, you can see definitions, which is the definitions that have been wrapped from OpenAPI and are just templated here as, uh, uh, as a Nix uh, structure. So in the end, uh, uh, this is what you get. Uh, you get uh, options. Oh, I don't have highlighting for this, but you get options. You get the API version and the kind, which, you have se which we have seen before is a string. Uh, uh, and the other ones are uh, references to other, uh, um, other types. And yeah, this, this, uh, this works. Uh, and this is kind of how you use it. Um, and if you have this, yeah, you import this module, uh, uh, K8S, which stands for Kubernetes. Um, you can write this in your configuration. You can, uh, you can say uh, under config.kubernetes.resources, we have a pod called Jellyfin. Uh, it has a specific uh, container called Jellyfin container. Inside of that, we have an image. Uh, and just like before, we have some ports that we open here. Um, and if you uh, um, use these as building blocks for your own uh, modules, you can also write something like this. So I've, this is just an example. If you have my modules and Jellyfin, you can abstract away from these resources and just write Jellyfin enable through, just like we, we are used to and we like, we like this in NixOS, of course. And uh, this will just uh, 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 generate your uh, whole uh, uh, deployment for you. Uh, yeah, so if you use these Next Nextfest modules, you get a bunch of benefits. For example, uh, uh, type checking, which I don't think Helm even provides. So if you uh, erroneously use a string for a container port, it will yeah it will explode in your face, which is good at build time. At build time is important, of course. Um, yeah, you cannot introduce uh, options. This is also uh, is also uh, caught. And in the end, what is generated is, uh, uh, oh yeah, this is how you actually use it in the end. Um, you use eval modules, which is also used under the hood of uh, Nix, uh, NixOS. Uh, you have these modules which are in the end evaluated and you get a result out of that. And you, the result of your NixOS configuration is your, well, your system. But in this case, it's uh, uh, what I've talked about this uh, Kubernetes manifest uh, in JSON actually here, but it's compatible with YAML. Um, so yeah, if we go from that for all the way from the open, open API spec to this, you can write it in uh, uh, Nixos modules and and yeah, I think this is uh, really nice to 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 write your uh, cluster with. Um, yeah, so it's, if there's any questions, then yeah, please. Yeah, <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, thank you. So questions? A lot. <laughs> uh, first, thank you for the talk. Um, was pretty cool. And my question would be the, like, Helm sucks. Uh, I think we can all agree on that. Um, but a big part of Helm is also the version management, of course, that you can have a release and you can yeah. roll back that release if every, anything goes wrong. And it does go wrong most of the time because Helm doesn't check at build time. Um, but there isn't a solution for that in Kubenix, right? Um, I would say... Um, I wouldn't say there's like a specific solution for it, I would say. But if you keep track of your uh, well, your uh, Nexus module, modules for this uh, and, and version pin anything, then everything, then you kind of have this, I would say. You can roll back and go forward if you want. 
but I couldn't do like a Cube Nix rebuild switch or no. rollback or okay. something like that. No, so it, so this is like Cube Nix is really only well, okay. So it has some basic functionality to apply this to your to your Kubernetes uh, 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 deployment, but. At the core, it's just generating these YAMLs, right? So then you still have to actually go out to your cluster and apply it. So that, that's not really a solution for it, uh, no. Yeah, okay. Then yeah. thank you very much. But I, th I think maybe there's actually something there that we should, uh, should yeah, look, look into because uh, it's really not like an... Uh, yeah, there's not really a Nixfest rebuild switch for a Kubernetes cluster yet, I think. Maybe you have a comment here? There is the cube add-on manager also bundled in Nix packages so that thing synchronizes a folder of YAML files okay. to the Kubernetes cluster. And if I have my Kubernetes cluster built with Nix, then I can build that folder with Nix and then it will synchronize the YAML files in the Kubernetes cluster and everything will be in sync. Sorry, what, what was this called? Helm manager? A uh, cube add-on manager. Okay, okay. No, that's a good uh, suggestion then, yeah. Hi. Do you see any way Kubenix could add a constraint on scaling any Kubernetes clusters? Sc uh, scaling in what way do you mean? Um, horizontally and vertically. At my organization, we have tens of clusters and hundreds of services per cluster. Would introducing Kubenix add some constraint on any scalability? Can you foresee that? Um, so I think in Kubernetes, most of these scalability things are already, uh, um, yeah, are already solved by having like the, uh, um, uh, what's it called, uh, daemon sets, deployments, like that, right? So you can also template that out, well, template that out, also use that in your Kubernetes uh, modules. I was not asking how to make a Kubernetes cluster scalable, I was asking if adding Kubenix could constrain any could constrain it. scalability. For um, example, when you have X amounts of people maintaining said Kubernetes clusters. I would say no, because in the end, what you get is a manifest. And this is also what I think all the other tools are doing, right? They are just generating a manifest which is submitted to, to your Kubernetes uh, cluster. So I don't think there's any constraints there per se, no. Thank you. Okay. Hi, thank you for the talk. Uh, where do you host your images and can you use Nix to generate them easily? I'm imagining Docker to Nix instead of a string there. Yeah. Not Docker tools. Yeah, so you can, um, so I have it kind of divided uh, right now. So, uh, a lot of my images that I use are just taken from Docker Hub. Uh, but I have a small slide on this. Yeah, so I think this is a really nice project, Nix and G. And the idea is that you can have uh, NixOS, kind of like NixOS in a container, but it doesn't have uh, SysMD with it. And um, yeah, you can have the same flexibility of having those options uh, um, and uh, get, yeah, get a container uh, uh, output in the end, which is not as big as you would get with just NixOS. So I am actually have, uh, I've, I have two running containers right now that are built with, uh, purely with this. So you can actually do that, but it's more work than just using something that's already out there for sure. Okay, we got still a lot of questions. Can you please all raise your hands again? So just, I'll have a short overview, okay. A higher. <laughs> Hey, uh, good stuff. Always nice to see another way to generate the YAML. Um, <laughs> um, so some of the uh, Nix packages, they have their own configurations where you can configure services however uh, way you want. And for example, for Jellyfin, there are also some configuration. So if I do that in my Nix configuration, are these going to be applied, I don't know, as environment variables or, or somehow to the deployment of Jellyfin? Are you, so we're just talking about Kubenix now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, uh, Kubenix doesn't, uh, yeah, doesn't like implement uh, those options uh, that Jellyfin exposes, right? You still have to like uh, um, 
provide that yourself as like a, a configuration file or uh, a command line parameter. So it doesn't do anything there. Uh, this does. So I think I think th uh, this would be a good solution for that. Uh, but Kubernetes in itself doesn't do that, no. Um, I guess the really added value here is the modulization, like Nix so Nix module ification yeah. of the, that Open API spec. Is that available outside? Like, can I use on another Open API thing that uses Open API generate modules out of it? Um, is that like a separate thing that could be used by other projects? I I think uh, I looked. At the code, of course, I don't think this is like a gen. It's like it's not implemented generically. This is like specifically uh, implemented for uh, Kubernetes. Um, I I don't really know how much work it would be to make uh, like like do this generically. I I would think it's easy because it is like it is a specification. Maybe this it's doable. Um, I did see uh, this project which basically does this in Terraform. Uh, it's, it grabs the open API, uh, API specification of an API and then turns that into Terraform. Uh, um, I think what they call it, the provider, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure how easy that would be to, to do in uh, for this, for Nix, I guess. Yeah. If I may, just one follow-up. Yeah. Do you statically generate them and copy them into your repository and pack like these modules, the yeah. Nix-generated code? Yeah. Is that at runtime or at... No, so yeah, so uh, these are built upfront by the Kubenix project and are uh, part. Uh, they are part of the the code base. So you don't do this at runtime or yourself. You just uh, use it from Kubenix. So uh, this is not really what people would call like import from derivation. I think because it just takes something that's already built. Right? It's not. This is not evaluated or built at at runtime. Uh, yeah. Hey, uh, thank you for your talk. Um, my question connects to the previous one, and I was wondering if we could generate um, submodule types purely functionally from from a JSON. Because if we read the uh, open uh, the JSON schema as a JSON file, is there any reason why we need code generation and templating for that? Um, so in this case, we want Nixos modules, right? Um, and these modules are uh, frequently just functions. And I don't think we can like print a Nix OS unevaluated Nix expression to a file. But I so think the, the options definition itself is just um, an attribute set, a nested one. Yeah, but yes, but it's doing, uh, uh, it, it has these definitions and then it refers to it uh, afterwards. I, there's some complexity there where it's, this is not. Maybe it's possible, but it, this is not the solution that was initially taken. Maybe, maybe it's possible. Yeah. Yeah. Speak uh, to the microphone, please. Yeah. So I have a project based on this more or less, and I noticed that those generated files are absolutely massive, yeah. generated in Nix, and it takes just forever to even uh, like format it or just write it. So that's one of the limitations. But there was a few questions about open API spec. There was a pretty awesome PR to Nix itself to add uh, uh, open API validator. Yeah, but I think it got closed. I'm not, I'm not sure. Maybe okay. there could be more push on it. But yeah, this could solve these kind of issues. Yeah, yeah maybe. Yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah. Did I misunderstand? Did you say that NixNG could reuse the existing modules in Nix packages so I could services dot whatever dot enable equals true, and then I could deploy that in a, um, and like like you said, we're in redundantly with Kubernetes, like a whole Nix OS closure. Is that possible or is that not possible? Uh, so I don't know where you're sitting. Uh, ah, yeah. So so your question is whether, what, so. Uh, I would want to just use NixOS, right? Like I wouldn't want to use containers, or yeah. if I'm going to use a container, I would just want my NixOS top-level closure to be the thing that's getting deployed, rather than individual services, like the whole system. Is that possible with NixNG, or is that did I misunderstand? Um, so NixNG implements 
the whole uh, uh, they implement their own uh, modules for services. So you can't just take the one from Nixos and put that into a container because I think the uh, the problem there is that it depends like every, like everything almost depends on systemd, and that's not really what you want in a container. It's going to be huge uh, and. Yeah, so that's not really possible. Uh, th there is something called Arion Compose, which attempted to do this, like run systemd in a container, and it kind of worked. And I'm not sure what the state of that is now, but maybe that's something to look into. Yeah, OK. Uh, that, that still works. Um, and it works because the Podman runtime uh, is uh, adapted to run systemd as well. Okay. It's, it's all uh, Red Hat stuff. Thank you very much, uh, and thank you, Pim, for the talk. Um, very qu quick question, really, but um, I've played a bit with Kubernetes, and I was wondering, um, a Kubernetes manifest is basically just some attribute set that you throw into a uh, 2JSON uh, function. Mm -hmm. So what is nice about using Nix is that you can use reference and stuff uh, that you don't get in, uh, in YAML or JSON, but I was wondering what is the really issue that Kubernetes is trying to address in the sense of one thing that is uh, really interesting about it is that it is doing uh, client-side verification of uh, custom resources. And I don't think there is really another tool that does it at the moment, like Customize or, uh, or Helm. Like basically you would throw your manifest into a, a dry run pipeline mm -hmm. against your own cluster or something like that. But it's true that uh, it c it can be quite difficult for someone because every Kubernetes cluster is quite different from uh, the other. And you can have ton of CRDs. You can have a lot of uh, open API, uh, API specs that are incomplete. Uh, yep. There is some uh, providers yep. that just don't give the specification over there, uh, and you have to guess it. So uh, they just throw a raw data in, into a... Uh, uh, the colon type uh, API, but uh, so is it very convenient for a user to have a repo where they have uh, Neoxys OS modules for every CRDs of uh, their cluster? Or because um, often I find myself just adding a custom types for the thing, but then I like the verification type uh, uh, aspect of uh, Neoxys OS modules. So your question is whether it would make sense to uh, like have an effort to uh, create Nexus modules for each of those services or if each of those projects. Yeah, because basically you could use you could attain the same aspect of Kubenix without Kubenix, but yeah. just with Nix. Yeah, basically just doing attribute sets and uh, the real uh, deal is uh, about open up a spec verification, but. It can. It seems to me like a very hard goal to attain because there is a, a ton of CRDs and it's always uh, changing. So you have to maintain this on top of of that, and uh, other tools that just don't do it. So I, I was wondering w what is the final objective of Kubenix uh, in this aspect. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't, I'm not sure if I understand your question correctly. Maybe we can talk uh, after the after the talk. Yeah. Okay, I guess um, we'll have to cut you off with questions now. Okay. Uh, give him a last uh, round of applause again. Thank you. Thank you very much.